Hey, what's up, everybody? I am trying to catch my breath. I'm so sorry. I have been working so hard last night and today to get us into the man cave. Yeah, get us into the man cave. We are in the manly man cave. Um, we, we got flooded um, uh, a few months back, and I am just now starting to get some things put together. It is not, I can't show you, <laughs> you know, I might get in trouble. Uh, but, you know, in terms of getting in trouble, though, I mean, the man cave is the man cave. This is my spot, right? I can burn incense down here without complaint because they don't like it on the upper floors. Um, you know, it just, this is, this is my spot, my posters, my pictures, all of that. So I'll show you, I've got about 225 uh, die-cast model cars. You can see a few of them uh, behind you here. Um, whoops, I hit the wrong button. Sorry about that. You can see a few of them behind you here, um, perhaps, that I've got set up. But nevertheless, welcome to the show. We've got something very serious that we're going to talk about today uh, for, uh, you know, in writing the story. We're going to talk about gerrymandering as I promised uh, that we would. Um, ah, wow. It, 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 this, is, this, is, this is deep. It really is because we're not talking about the past. You know, I've been telling you that the past informs the present and all of that, but this is not about the past. This is about right now. This is about what's going on right now. And if we don't do something to change some of this up, man, we are going to suffer some of the same things that we have before, which is people getting elected. <clears throat> All right. Let me, let me run it down to you like this, okay? And I'm going to be redundant today on, on purpose. I'm going to watch the clock. I'm going to go over this several times so you understand how this works. Not because I think you can't get it, maybe the first time around, you know, but because I didn't understand all the workings of this. So we're going to do this and we're going to have some pizza as we do it, like I promised. All right. So when you are in any state in the United States, when you are the, the ruling party in that state, you decide how the elections are, the, 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 the electoral map, you decide how that's set up. So if the Democrats are in charge, they will, they will set the lines to make that, you know, to make it happen. Hopefully, you know, it's something that's done fairly. But certainly that uh, is not always the case and has not always been the case. So what the Republican Party has done, and they happen to be the party that did it. This isn't me trying to whatever. What the Repo Republican Party has done is they went around from state to state. And again, remember, I said I'm going to be redundant. They went around from state to state, and they created this system of making sure that they could control the vote based on where people live. All right, so gerrymandering in Georgia. Now, we're focusing on Georgia, but I submit to you, North Carolina, Arizona, those places, the reason that there is Republican control there is because this has been done there, and I'm going to show you some evidence that proves that in just a bit. But it's the manipulation of an electoral con uh, constituency uh, boundaries so that it favors a party or a class. So, in other words, if you if you believe that um, white upper middle class men tend to vote Republican, then you're going to draw those lines so that those men are sectioned off 
and they're or they're in the majority. Or uh, you'll do it in the sense, and again, I'm going to show you this with food in just a minute. Or you'll do it in the sense where there's just a few of the other people. You may divide the, the, the pizza up evenly, but only a few of the other people um, that you believe will vote a particular way are uh, in a particular section. Or you'll bunch them all together. It's, this will make more sense in a minute. Gerrymandering. Wow. Wow. Got stuff coming up from YouTube and everywhere else. I apologize. Gerrymandering is the act of drawing congressional state legislation or political boundaries to favor a political party or one particular candidate candidate to be elected to office. Gerrymandering often leads to disproportionate polit polit politicians from one party being elected to office and it creates districts of voters who are social, economically, racially, or politically alike so that the members of Congress are safe from potential challenges. As a result, they have little reason to compromise with their colleagues from the other party. What is this trying to tell you? That some of the crazy things that you will hear people from other parties say, some of the most asinine things that they will come up with, you know, they, they say these things based on the fact that there's a, an expectancy that no matter what I'm saying, people that vote along particular party lines are going to make sure that I stay in office. They're going to make absolute sure that I stay in office, all right? So where did this all come from? Who created this? Eldridge Gary, which they changed the name to gerrymandering. He founded gerrymandering. Eldridge uh, Thomas Gary was an American politician and, and diplomat as the Democrat, Republican, uh, as a Democrat Republican, he served in the fifth as the fifth vice president of the United States under President James Madison from March 1813 until his death in November 1814. Okay, so how did he do this? He created, he changed these lines. This is going to be your first look at how, at, 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 you know, it looked like a salamander, and that's why they called it gerrymandering. They combined the two names. But this is how he did it. All right, he, he divided the lines in the state to make sure, right, there were particular voters where you're looking at the salamander all along that body. Those are voters that he believed would vote in the direction that he wanted them to. And so based on that, he created those lines to make that happen. All right, so let's, let's, um, let's, let's get our... Let's get our pizza together here, all right, to get our, our very first look at the way that this works. Okay, so you have a pizza pie. Pizza will uh, normally, I don't know, depending on whose house you're in, I guess, if you're cutting your own, but a pizza will have eight slices. What they will sometimes do is they will put four of those slices into a district and then split the other ones up where some people may vote a particular way uh, or whatever, but because they've got the majority, you know, in a particular area together, or let's say it's three, they'll, they'll put three together. There'll be some others that are bunched up over here or whatever. They'll do that. And that assures them that they've got a blocked vote. They'll end up with the majority. Now, there are other things that they'll do to make sure that, that you know, that polling places, things like that, that are in areas where people have issues with transportation, things like that. They'll close those polls down. Georgia just did it in a pre-election. They just, they just did that. Other states are doing the same thing. But that's what gerrymandering is. It's boxing everybody in together. All right, another way that they'll do it, which was done there, 
in, in Georgia is they've got to disenfranchise the vote. So they will take a, a chunk of people like you see this large piece out of this pizza and they can't even vote. They don't even, they don't even have a say. All right? So this is where this came from. All right, we're going we're gonna to define it, and then I'm going to go back and explain. Uh, 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 I'm going to go back, and we're going to take another look at at least this theory. may not look at the pizza, but, uh, well, I got a whole other pizza for you. But the point is that we'll go back, and I'll explain this so that you will understand when I finish, you will know exactly why Stacey Abrams, it was impossible for her to become governor. Unless people changed, you know, the way that they vote. Okay, so let's, let's get back where I was. This is the man that created this thing. Practical explanation. 2010 Republican districts, uh, uh, they went about hiring Thomas Hoffler to rig the election maps in various states. In 2018, when Hoffler died, his daughter shared his maps with activist groups. North Carolina was Hoffler's masterpiece, right? They, got, they gained clear Republican control. There were two methods used called PAC and crack. Called PAC and crack. So they, she gets it. She gives uh, the information that she has. She gives it to, uh, uh, you know, the world so that they understand, look, this is what my dad was doing. This is, this is where this mess came from. All right? Packing and cracking. A pack is when, and again, we're going back over this again. A pack is when you put all of the vo black voters into the same district. Put them all in the same pot. A crack is when you split up the black vote into Republican majorities. Now, listen, most black people vote the same. They vote along Democratic Party lines. Personally, I don't. My ballot's all over the place. All right, I vote issues, and I vote people I trust. Now, this isn't a, 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 a silly plug, uh, but... Um, I voted for Bush twice. I'd like to take that second one back, but I voted for Bush twice. But um, in the city of Cincinnati, one of the greatest judges that we have is Ralph Winkler or Ted. He's a friend of mine. He's Republican. He's a moderate Republican. I have, I have absolutely no... I don't even consider anybody else. This is, he's a man of God. He's a good man. I don't care what party he's in. I care how he feels about people. I care about him trying to walk out a righteous life. So as far as that goes, I'm not going to vote along party lines or whatever uh, because I want somebody in there that can be trusted. All right? So, sorry. I hope that doesn't uh, bother Ted if he sees this. But the point is, is that that's why I vote for him. I trust him. Right. I trust him as a man of God. I'm proud to be able to do that. So it, it, you know, his party doesn't matter. I hope that you feel the same way. All right. So let's look at this pack and crack again. All right. Take a look at this pizza. I know I got to be making you hungry, man, because it's bothering me. It's the third pizza. It's the last one, though, I promise. Take look at the the now a kid cut this right. The mom was joking about you know how her kid cut this pizza so crazy, but man, does it serve our purposes? Let's say the pepperoni is the black vote, and you have got to curtail the black vote because if you don't, Stacey Abrams is going to get elected. So you see where the, where the pepperoni is, you see where he cut it about a third of the way over? You'd make that one vote. All of that would be one vote. Now, 
you have some pepperoni that's sprinkled in there with the sausage. You got some black folks in there with the white folks. Right? So it looks halfway decent because you got some other black people that are over in some other jurisdictions. But the but the the bottom line is all of those pepperonis on the left side, that's one vote. So the sausage is gonna have the majority. And when you know as a senator, as a congressman, whether it's st at the state level or the federal level, when you know that that pepperoni only represents one vote, boy, you can get in there and act an absolute fool because you know there's no way that you're going to lose. Now, again, there, the, the, Hoffler was over. He did this in five different states. This wasn't just in, in one place. He did this in five different states. All right? North Carolina being his, his claim to fame, but he did it in a variety of places. Okay, so let's now take a look at what happened to Stacey Abrams. Okay. The black vote was blocked. <clears throat> Here's the nasty thing that happened in this situation. Brian Kemp was the Secretary of State for Georgia, and Secretary of State is over the elections. It can do whatever they want to, to be over the elections. Now, there should have been a law on the books that said, if you're going to run for office, you can't also be over the elections. But Georgia doesn't have a law like that. So Brian Kemp, with no conscience, wants to win so bad that he was willing to change the lines, to close polling places, to, to pack and crack, to make sure that he got in office. He made absolutely sure there was no way he wasn't going to end, end, end up in office. That's the first step that he took. Are you ready for the next one? I don't think so. I don't think you're ready for what this cat did. Remember, he's the Secretary of State. He's controlling the elections. All right? Boom. 32% of Georgians are black. Kemp began voter suppression to inhib inhibit the vote because 70% of those people weren't allowed to vote. Here's what he did as the person that's over their government, over the elections. He said things like, your driver's license must match what we've got in the government in terms of your name. And it was, and listen, it was literally this petty. Your address might match. Okay? Your address might match. Your, your, your uh, uh, name may be exactly like the government name, but if you spelled your name Daryl with two L's and they had something with only one L for Daryl, Boom, you couldn't vote. 70% of the black vote could not even be counted because they never voted. Oh, I mean, there were all kind of little tricks. It, you know, they put them all in one district, right? They, 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 they packed them in there into one district. They already shortened the vote. 32%. Of, of the population is black, but 70% of those 32% of black people had an absolutely no voice. There's no way Stacey Abrams was going to win that election unless somehow their, 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 the, the surveys they did, uh, the polls they did, if, if those turned out to be inaccurate and she got a larger portion of the vote uh, 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 with, with people that under normal circumstances uh, will vote the Republican ticket unless that happened? Unless that happened. Stacey Abrams wasn't getting in office. It wasn't going to happen. Stacey Abrams was not going to get in office. So it's just a it's just a it's just a foul trick that's used and and it's legal. Brian Kemp didn't break the law. He just doesn't have any morals. 
you know, same person that opened the state up too early. Same person that we got a bunch of teenage kids that are down there sick now because of the way that they opened the schools. That, that guy. Guy that wants to keep Trump happy. As of the time of this recording, 165,000 people have died. Do you guys understand? Let me, let me, let me side note because I'm not done yet. Do you realize that in the six months that we've had this, the, the coronavirus, that, that 1,000 times the number of people that had it in March are now dead? It has grown by 1,000 times. But when these guys, I mean, right now Trump is talking about, you know, the Republican governors can go ahead and open. It's the Democrat we need Democrats who need to take a look at because they don't know what they're doing or whatever. I mean, it's so biased and so blatant. It's crazy. But anyway, this isn't so much. I mean, we're talking about politics today, but this isn't so much about me trying to tell you about uh, uh, have a, a, a conversation about Trump. I'm just telling you the end result is that these people have no fear, so they may act any kind of way. Because they're not afraid that they're going to lose their position. That's not a concern they have. So they'll go ahead and open up and support the president and things that, I mean, come on, common sense should tell you. Okay, look at George's map here. The left is what they have. The right side, that's what it should look like. If you were going to do it fairly and divide it evenly. Now, there are many more people that watch this video than live in the state of Ohio. And I am, a well, I am well aware of that. But I still want to show Ohio's. In the state of Ohio, ours is not right either. Now, I, I love the, the, the things that, that DeWine has done. Yeah, he's a Republican, but I love the things that he's done uh, in this state, trying to protect us, doing what's right, stepping up, um, you know, not following uh, the party line just because they're getting ready to do something crazy. I respect that. I believe that, that the last two governors that we've had really show us a lot of care and, and, and respect. They're doing the best they can with, with what they have. Um, you know, and if I find out that there may be some things that are different here and there, I, I would actually be surprised. But nevertheless, the, the point that, that I'm making is, even though we ended up with what I believe to be a good governor, the lines are still not drawn fairly. It's still not the way that it should be. Okay? So, so what are we gonna, what are we gonna do about it? What are we going to do about it? We can't just complain about it. What are we going to do about it? How do we change it? Well, at the state level, the first thing that needs to happen is we need to say that if you're holding a particular position and now you're going to run for an office, that that can't, you, you got you to gotta leave that job to run for this one, not you mean, I understand that somebody might want to go back into their position and not end up being jobless, but that needs to be the risk you're going to take if you're going to put yourself in a position where, or if you're in a position where you can affect the elections. That's not right. You can't do that. So, we just have to understand what the situation is. And we have to, we have to, Start going about. Listen, just like I explained to you, uh, I uh, about the the testing that shows uh, police bias. I have been fortunate enough. Uh, someone contacted me today. Not that can make. Uh, uh, not that's making a decision about the civil service exam or some of the screening that they do. But I know the reason that they got in touch is that they're curious. Okay, let me see this test. Maybe I can I can show it to somebody. And so that, that's what I want. I want to bring about change, folks. I'm not just trying to make noise. 
I want to do whatever I can. I mean, a big part of that is this, just getting information to you about how these things work. But anywhere that I can see that I can have an effect on what's going on, I want to do it. Why not? I want to leave it like it is and just say, hey, that's wrong. Your voice is only heard if you're doing something that kind of upsets the apple cart a little bit and brings about fairness and change. Isn't that right? That's the way I feel about it. All right. So, I just want to remind you that, you know, all of these, the, the, they're, all these things cost money to make them happen. The, the, uh, the organization that I want to get in touch with to get my hands on this test, the American Psychological Association, I've got to pay for what I want. Well, you have to get a subscription as if I'm going to be accessing them all the time. That's not the plan, but, but that's what you have to do. So I'm just, you know, I'm doing what I've been doing. I'm asking you for help so that I can get this done. All right? And I appreciate it if you would participate. And for those that have, I appreciate that that you that you have and what you've already done, okay? All right. Listen, finished a little early today. I hope you understand in the three ways that I brought gerrymandering to you so that you would understand how it works. Uh, if we don't change it, They'll continue, especially if black people are already not in office all across this country, right? You think that those that think in a different way, um, how can I put this? Because the Democrats have done the same thing. But, but if there are certain things that, that, that elected officials are doing that you don't like, unless we change this, you can't get them out of office, because there are too many people that are going to vote against, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 along party lines. And if they put everybody in one box, if they've stacked us, if they've packed us rather, I'm sorry, if they've packed us, it's, it's just not going to work. So we must do something about this. Listen, I'm Pastor Jackie. I love you. There are other ways to get in touch with the ministry, right? Where there are podcasts that have this stuff and uh, I'm on the radio Monday through Friday, WCVG 1320 AM 445, Monday through Friday without exception, seven and a half years, over seven and a half years now. I am on the radio during the week. Please, please, please check out uh, the things that, that we're doing there that will build up your life. I'm done. May the Lord bless you. May he bless your day. We will see you Friday. God bless. Bye-bye.